If I multiply these, this guy by i and do it repeatedly, I could do the arithmetic of this quite quickly, right? So for example, if z2 equals i times z1, right? I'm going to be a bit naughty. I'm just going to write across the page because uh, whiteboard because I'm, you'll see why in a second. I'm just going to get uh, 3i plus i squared. Do you agree with that? So what's the real part? Negative 1. Negative 1. So I'll write that first. And then the imaginary part is 3i. Okay. Now if I go and do it again, z3, and say that's the previous one and multiply it by i, what am I going to get here? Well, I've multiplied both of these by i, which gives me negative i plus 3i squared, which is, now what's the real part in there? Minus 3, very good. Minus 3 minus i. We'll do it one last time, z4. If I define z4 as what happens when I multiply the previous one by i again, i times z3, okay? I'm going to take this guy and it's going to go minus 3i minus i squared. What's the real part? One. It's 1. 1 minus 3i. Okay, now I know where all four of my points are. Okay, they are here, 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 and here. Let's really quickly plot these guys, right? As you will see um, shortly, um, i is not a good choice for a common ratio. It's a bit of a boring choice in the same way that minus 1 is a boring choice for a common ratio for a GP. It still is, but it's not a very useful one. We'll get to more useful ones later. The answer is absolutely you can. Like, it's a number. Complex numbers are numbers. So I can make it my common ratio, my, my first value, or whatever. Okay. All right, um, I'm a bit behind the eight ball. So let's plot these really quickly, right? 3 plus i is there, z1. Minus 1, minus 1, plus 3i, right, is here, z2, minus 3 minus i, where's that? Minus 3 minus i, and that shouldn't surprise us because z3 is the negation of z1, is it not? So you can see I've gone all the way around. And then z4, 1 minus 3i. Okay, now the rotation here is not quite as obvious. The reason why I chose these values is because I had the axes there that make the rotation like, oh, there's 90 degrees, 90 degrees. To make it more obvious here, just like I did when we, I tried to demonstrate what addition of complex numbers was, I'm going to draw in intervals to the origin. Okay? Interval here, interval here. Whoops, sorry. Interval here. And now the rotation by pi on two radians becomes very obvious. Do you see it more clearly now, right? You've got right angles happening everywhere here, right? And each time you multiply by i, you're going, note that, anti-clockwise by pi on two. This each time, okay? So yes? Is this why when we did the um, regions for the thing that's anti-clockwise? Yes, yes, okay. I'm so glad you said that, right? Um, the answer is yes, and in case you didn't quite catch that, right? Think back to how we've been measuring angles in the past, right? If you're doing, say, compass bearings, right? Compass bearings? How do we do, we've got north, south, east, west here, but how do we do three-digit true bearings? Where do we start from? We start from north, and then which way do we count? We count clockwise, right? Now, the reason we start from north is because on a compass, like if you're facing north, that's the way you're looking. So it makes sense to start from that way. And we count clockwise because, well, that's the way clocks count. And we're used to counting clocks. So you look at it and you're like, oh, okay, that's the way it goes. And then, for some incomprehensible reason, when we transition to talking about the unit circle and all that kind of thing, we say, okay, you know how you're starting up there? Just forget that. Start over here. And they're like, what? 
Why, right? And then we say, wait, wait, it gets better. Don't just start in a weird spot. I want you to go in the opposite direction. Like, what were they thinking? And the answer is, they were thinking this. Now, sadly, most people, you know, don't get to see this. But now you do, and you can see anti-clockwise has to be the way, right? If you wanted it to go clockwise, everything would be backwards in terms of your negatives and stuff, right? So... Um, you can see, multiplying by i once, it takes you anti-clockwise. There's no, there's no like, ooh, I wonder which way we should go. Like, the coordinates tell you which way you should go. And the answer is, it's anti-clockwise.